Hi, I'm Ryan. Today I wanted to introduce the Buster Beagle 3D Injection Molding Machine Mark II. This machine is an upgrade to the original Buster Beagle 3D Injection Molding Machine and uses all of the same components, but allows for the creation of a two cubic inch shot, as well as a more rigid frame and greater pressure. So let's get started. First, I wanted to reiterate that this is an upgrade to the original machine and uses all of the same components from your smaller machine. So if you've already put the original machine together, you can still use those parts on this upgrade. Since the electronics are the same, I will not go over that in this video, but go over the things that have been updated and changed with this machine. If you would like to see the original build for the parts and how to hook everything up, you can check out the video here or click on the link in the description. The main change to this machine is the extension of the original heat chamber. This increased the shot volume to two cubic inches and bolts right onto the existing chamber. So if you have already made one of these machines and wish to upgrade, you don't have to buy the chambers all over again. This might also mean that you have to increase the length of the bolt that holds the plunger onto the machine. You will need about nine or more inches, so I recommend purchasing a 3 8 16 threaded rod about 12 inches long to use in place of the bolt. Because of the added length of the chamber and the screw, it was also necessary to increase the height of the original machine. I had first attempted to simply extend the pole and use the same base, but it truly felt dangerous and caused the pole to flex when pulling down on the handle. I felt the best thing to do was to build a frame at a 2020 T-slot aluminum extrusion. I purchased all of these sections cut to size and just had to put it together. I did have to add an M5 thread to the center hole of the angle support braces, but the rest just bolted together. I have created a PDF that goes over how all of this goes together, and you can find a link to that in the description. I have also provided a link to a supplier who has offered to put a kit together so all of these parts can be bought at once to make it easier for everyone. I will still give out all the dimensions and parts for those who want to source these parts themselves. The other note about the frame is that I have replaced the cheap pole that came with the drill press with a longer 25 millimeter linear rail. This is one place where those outside the US have an advantage since the drill press stands are made with metric measurements. This means that the pole is not an inch diameter but 25 millimeters, which is just under an inch. I can't simply go to the store and buy a longer pole because the inch diameter would be too large. I was able instead to buy this 25 millimeter solid linear rail that bolts onto the frame and since it's solid and strong, it really helps with the rigidity of the machine and takes out most or all of the flex. The next big difference is the handle of the machine. Because of the larger shot volume and the need for increased pressure, I have upgraded the handle with this one and a quarter by a quarter inch thick steel bar. I just bought a 36 inch bar and cut it in two to make two sections of the handle. You can cut this with a metal hacksaw or I, I actually did it with a rotary tool. I then had to drill holes in it that matched the original handle and hooked everything up. If you check out the PDF with the frame instructions, there is a part in there with the measurements for the handle. The metric equivalents for all of the parts of the handle would work just fine. Also inside of the top section, the springs that came with the drill press stands needed to be replaced with a more flexible spring. The original spring could not be extended to the full length of the pull without becoming stretched out. Since these springs are not as strong as the original, I wanted to make sure this handle didn't come crashing down on me. So the last thing I did was drill a hole straight through the bottom section of the handle and into the top part of the drill press bracket. I then added a quick release pin that I use as a safety to make sure it doesn't chop me in half when I'm not paying attention. I also added a 3 8 inch aluminum rod into the guide on the bracket to keep everything lined up. I used my rotary tool to cut a little notch in the bottom and used the same clip I took off the guide that came with the drill presses. The final change, and this came from the comments of the last video, was I changed the location that the ground wire connected to based on the fact that the brackets might have some paint or coating on them. The wire, now green, also apparently a universal standard, now bolts to the bare metal frame instead of behind the PID enclosure. Then I finished everything off with a 4 inch drill press vise, and then you're ready to use the Mark II machine. Two other quick notes. In the original video I said that the polarity of the K-style temp sensor wires didn't matter, and that was incorrect. Red is positive. 
You'll know that they are hooked up backwards if your temperature starts to display negative values. If it does that, just swap the wires. The second note is because of the wide array of Rex C100 PID controllers out there, you may need to adjust the settings on the electronics. I will link a great video that goes over how to adjust the PID controllers to tune your machine. You especially want to do that if you notice your temperature is way overshooting your target temp. You also want to pay close attention to the max temp of your heater bands and make sure that the PID controller is not trying to heat it up higher than the value which can damage your bands. So that's it. I wanted to thank everyone for the amazing reception to the original Buster Beagle 3D injection molding machine and the interest this machine has already been generating. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please do hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing to be in the loop for more videos coming up having to do with injection molding, CNC, 3D printing, and more fun things I have planned coming up. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.